another interesting session that we're going to have. And uh, we do hope people are going to uh, enjoy it and uh, take lots of lessons from it. So today again, we have in our midst, uh, Dr. Muya, who is going to lead us through the, the didactic session. And then uh, we do have our experts as well present. Uh, Dr. Thomas in yet. Uh, Dr. Sevilla is here. So they're here. And also right at the back behind me, you can actually see our HIV nurse practitioners also present in our, in our midst. Uh, we just want to just recognize a few people on the, on the Spox. Uh, St. Luke's. We, we appreciate your, your, your attendance and uh, many others, too many to mention. Thank you for joining us. St. Francis, always faithful attendance. We, we appreciate your, your, your presence on this platform. So before we proceed, uh, I would like uh, one of our, our officers here, Madam Mwamba, to just run us through the discussion points that uh, we're able to pick out from the last week's very interesting echo session on supply chain by MSL. And I hope we're here and we did ask lots of questions, but I think we'll have uh, some updates from uh, Madam Mamba. Please go ahead. Thank you. Just a, um, Evelyn Mamba, a quick recap of Medco Stores Limited session last week. Medco Stores is mandated to store and distribute commodities purchased by the government and its cooperating partners. The other thing that was discussed as the objective is that Medco Stores Limited has greatly increased its capacity to store products safely and accurately. Accurately, sorry. It is transitioning to new WMS that aims to increase product accuracy, security, and efficiency, thus reducing turnaround time. MS, MSL is customer-oriented, and it was, a, it was also discussed that it aims to constantly innovate to serve the customers effectively. Thank you. Thank you for that. And uh, so we are going to go into our didactic session this, morning, this afternoon, and uh, Dr. Muya is going to lead us through this afternoon. So we'll just uh, share. So, Dr. Muya. Good afternoon, everyone. Like Dr. Ziambo has said, my name is Dr. Muya. I'm found at the Pediatric Center of Excellence. So, our session today is management of an HIV infected child. Sorry, we didn't correct the exposed. This one is infected. Slides. So our learning objectives are, by the end of this session, people should have at least known what are the age appropriate HIV tests and what is the first time regimen that we use and then viral load monitoring. So we go into our first polling questions. The first one, Okay, so we'll start our polling questions from here. And the question is, uh, which of the following is true? In children, HIV infection is confirmed by NAT in uh, those above 24 months of age. Treating acute infection or any opportunistic infection before ART initiation is not necessary. C. The correct regimen for a child weighing more than 20 kg is ABC3TC DTG. 
the purpose of monitoring and following up is to assess effectiveness of therapy. So we have uh, about uh, one minute and 15 seconds to respond to this uh, polling question. Today we're looking at an infected child. And so we want to see what we can learn from this session today regarding an infected child. So far, we only have about 17 out of 21 who have uh, polled. We have 20, for 61 uh, participants. So we're expecting a little more people to participate in, the, in this polling. Okay, we are going to close the polling in the next five minutes. Sorry, five seconds. So that we may be able to proceed with uh, to the next polling. So I'll end my pause here. And this is how we have uh, performed. Most of people, most of the people think it's D. So move on to the next question. So uh, the next polling question is this. <clears throat> Which of the following is true? Which of the following is true? An HIV infected child should be on AZT, free TC, NVFP for at least six weeks. Cochumoxazole should be initiated at birth in every HIV-exposed infant, regardless of CD4 count. For children above five years of age, initiate cochumoxazole when in WHO stage two, three, or four, or CD4 less than 350. An infant who is not virally suppressed and on ABC3TC efavirenz should be changed to AZT3TC evavirus. What is the best, what is, which one of the following is, is true? So we may pick one best answer. We have one more minute in which to respond to this polling question. The hub doesn't have an opportunity to, to pour as well. <laughs> yeah, we would have been able to. Okay, so we'll end the polling uh, for, for, for polling question number two. Yeah. And so I'll just share the results and how we have performed on this question. So most people thought it was C. The next question <clears throat> So the next question is which of the following statements is true not is the same as serology test taker or patient preparation before ART initiation is not necessary under test and treat strategy. A child weighing above 30 kg can't be given TLD. A child who screened TB negative should start TPT with INH at 10 milligrams per kg body weight. We have one minute, 15 seconds in which to answer uh, this poll question. Participation is improving in this one, I'm sure because we've done this one before. So it's a good revision for us all. No, 
okay? 10 more seconds. So we'll end the poll here. And I'll just share the results. So this is how most people are thinking that it is D. So maybe we should learn one or two things for the next presentation as uh, Dr. Mwia will proceed into uh, discussing further on, that, on this didactic. Dr. Mwia. Okay, thank you, Dr. Ziambo, for that. Next slide. Okay, so um, at the moment, our guidelines in Zambia are such that all HIV-infected children are eligible for ARRT. So we get our children from the various entry points in the hospital or uh, in all, whatever we come across anyone who is um, HIV infected, predominantly in the hospital, but now we're also doing index testing. So in order for us to confirm infection in children, we have two sets of children. There are those below 24 months of age where we use NAT. NAT is nucleic acid tests. So this is looking for the components of the virus, actual components. Of it. That's the only way you confirm infection in children less than 24 months of age. In those above 24 months of age, we use this road for tests. This is uh, looking for the body's response to the presence of the virus. So that's the difference between the two tests. Okay, once somebody is confirmed to be HIV infected, which means we need to proceed with the preparing to initiate ARRT. But before we do that, we need to get blood for liver function, kidney function. We do full blood count, and then we also do CD4 count. Okay, for those who are below 24 months, before we initiate, we're supposed to repeat a NAT test. But this should not hinder the starting. So what happens is that we initiate, we take a sample, a repeat one to confirm, but meanwhile at the same time, we initiate the RRT. However, we should also make sure that the caretaker, their stroke patient, because also deal with adolescents, they're adequately prepared to start, so they must be ready that they need to initiate. Then the second thing is a little bit up. If a child is sick or they have an acute infection or an OI, before initiating, those have to be treated first. That's the standard procedure. Next slide. Okay, um, what to start with? So what to start with usually, again, in pediatrics, we have a, a range of children that is from neonates all the way up to adolescents. So in the neonatal period, the first two weeks of life, for those who are infected, we give Zidobudin, Lamubidin, and Nevirapine. So the common term used are AZT, 3TC, NDP. So the first two weeks of life, we use the same drugs we use for prophylaxis. But in this case, it's for treatment for the first 14 days of life. On the 15th day, then we move to Abacabal, Lamubidin, and Nevirapine. That's why there, where it says after two weeks of, above two weeks of age, the drugs which should be used are, if you are less than 20 kgs, uh, we are, you are given Abacabal, Lamubidin, and the, uh, Lopina Verotinova, which has got two names. The syrup is Caritra, and then the tablets, we usually call them Aluvia. But here I must say that Carit, the syrup slowly will be replaced by granules. So if you are going to touch someone today or tomorrow, henceforth, who's weighing less than 20 kilos is in the above two weeks of age. We give a back of a lamovidin or pina For above 20 kgs, 24.5 kgs, we give a back of a lamovidin and deltograva. So above 20 kgs, we give a back of a lamovidin deltograva. Now, because of the intricacies of pediatrics, we have another formulation, which when you are above 25 kgs, 25 kgs and above, we give you TAF or TAFID. This one we call it uh, tenofovalafenamide. XTC there is the lamovidin or emtristamine and the rotograva. That's a preferred for uh, pediatrics. However, people know the story of TOD, the famous TOD. So that one can only be given when somebody is above 30 kgs. 
But for pediatrics, we prefer Tafid, which is tenofovirapenamide, free TC, and DTG or amitristamine. So if you are going to start anyone today or tomorrow, this is what you give them. Next slide. Okay, this is just uh, in a little bit more uh, same, but a bit detail. So here we have AZT3 disneverap in the first two weeks of life. We have also another drug called Lotagrava, which can be given, but the trouble is that we don't have the right formulation. Probably in the near future, when we do, we can give those below two weeks of age Lotagrava. Okay, then above two weeks of age, like I said, above 20, the preferred is Abacavala, Movidin, Opinava, then the alternative is uh, with the Lotagrava. The ones above 20, that's ABC, 3TC, DTG. Now, this one, can be given once a day, as long as the dose of abacava, which is supposed to be given, for example, a child is supposed to be given 150 milligrams twice a day, you give it as 300 once a day together, because DTG can be given once a day. So those two, ABC3TC, as long as you give the total dose for the day at the same time with DTG, that's acceptable. And then for above 25, like I've written there, they stuff it, and then there's also um, ABC3, TC, DTG, but above 30, TLD. Next slide. So patients already on ART at the moment, we don't expect any child older than 14 days of age to born AZT3, TC, except those who are being given prophylaxis. If any child is on AZT3, TC, NVP, above 14 years of age, and they are infected, they are not on the correct regimen. We have, we have to review that. And then those on ABC3, TC, if they are all suppressed, continue, because we need to uh, run to finish their fibrils, which is there. The reason why I gave you the area of drugs, which I said that if you are starting someone today, you give those drugs, because the fibrils will no longer be used in the future. We are phasing out probably in the next four months or so, it will no longer be fibrillated. But if you have it in your facility, patient is well suppressed and they are on a fibrillated, continue. But if they are not well suppressed, they are on a fibrillated based, ABC3 to say fibrillated, and the rest than 20 kgs, then you have to change to second line, which is AZT3 to Silopinava, I know we don't have Rotagrava in the facilities around, although here in the, at Central and the PCOE, we have. In above 20 kgs, if they are failing and they are on a fibrous, so give AZT3 DC to Otagrava. Another option, if they are more than 35 kgs, then you give Atazanava. So it will be AZT3 DC, Atazanava, Retonava. Next slide. Okay, once you initiate them on treatment, the next thing is follow up. Uh, that is just at the minimum what I've indicated there. So patient starts CRT, that is the, the red one. Then green is uh, every two weeks for the first four weeks. So they will come after two weeks of the initiation, then another two weeks, then in the first four weeks, then every four weeks and two, 12, 12 weeks. Then after that, for those less than 24 months, usually we see them monthly. Here the reason is that uh, when you are just born, let's give you an example. You are 3.5. By the time you are one year of age, you would have gained, you would have reached 10 kgs. So the weight gain is quite rapid for those who are below 24 months. That's why we need to see them quite often or every month so that we adjust our doses according to the weight gain that they are, uh, as they are growing. Here we see challenges where people don't change doses. As a result, we're encouraging uh, resistance. The next one, for those about 24 months, you can see them every three months once stable on therapy. The new thing here, because we also see adolescents, we have also joined in the DSD model for adolescents. We also give uh, six months more scripting for those older adolescents. But otherwise, both standards we do every three months. <coughs> okay, so monitoring children on ART, the purpose here for monitoring is to assess effectiveness of therapy. So it has two components. There's clinical and laboratory. Next slide. So the clinical monitoring includes uh, each time they come, we take a history, we examine them to see how they are doing, evaluate, evaluation of adherence. We also check on the side effects of the drugs, any illnesses that have come up, uh, e.g. you screen for TB, and then we provide continuous psychosocial counseling and support, 
and then we review and modify long-term treatment plan as needed. So on the clinical, I mean, on, uh, on the laboratory monitoring, uh, usually this is, it includes uh, labs, routine laboratory in FBC, UEs, LFTs, but in addition to that, we also do CD4 count and viral load. So viral load is a major mode of monitoring which is recommended to see the effectiveness of ART. Before we are using uh, CD4, but now viral load is the, the main one which is recommended if you have to uh, see or how effective ART is. So in terms of schedule, patient on CRT for more than six months, we do viral load at six months. Okay, if they are all suppressed, what is gray there, we continue adherence support and CRT, then we repeat at 12 months post initiation, then routine annually. Okay, if they are not all suppressed, it's more than a thousand copies. There's enhanced adherence counseling. I hear the nurses call it EAC. Then from there, you repeat after three months. If more than 1,002 viral load, then there's virological failure. If you have first line, you change second line. Then if second line, you change to third line. But for children, because the viral loads are usually very high, if there's proof, I mean, you can see that the viral load is coming down from the, the one you did at six months significantly, then you may have to continue the same regimen. Okay, so what are the outcomes after six months of treatment? So expect the best that can happen is clinical improvement, where patients uh, has improved clinically, they are gaining for us, the child is gaining weight, they are acquiring the normal, the required milestones as expected, the adolescents acquiring secondary sexual characteristics, so the normal growth of a child. Then the oh, next raise in CD4. Sometimes uh, there may be clinical deterioration due to iris. Then the worst case scenario may be death. But that's what we don't desire. Next slide. Okay, so as part of the package uh, for care of an HIV infected child, at six weeks, we initiate cotramoxazole for all the infants. This will continue until the age of five. But if they are above the age of five, we initiate cotramoxazole based on the whole stage, clinical stage two, three, or four, or if their CD4 count is less than 350. So this is similar to adults. Okay, the other thing we do is to screen for TB. If they are negative TB screen, then we give them INH prophylaxis. I think this Dr. Longo has been singing this song, so we need to join him to make sure this is done. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> okay, so as part of the package, again, is uh, we need to follow the national guidelines. Mother should be advised to breastfeed accordingly. Some of the things we talk about here is exclusive breastfeeding for the six, first six months, and then we uh, complementary feeding after that, and then they're supposed to be fed according to whatever food is available, what is nutritious, what makes the mother appear healthy or her children. Then the under five vaccinations, vaccines should be given, then monitoring growth and development. This is very, very important. <coughs> Next slide. So some of the key points, so in children, HIV infection is confirmed by NAT if they are less than 24 months of age, and serology tests if greater than 24 months of age. The reason why we are talking about NAT is because they still carry maternal antibodies, so they, it may not be a reflection of their infection, but the fact that they are born from a mother <coughs> HIV infected. So AZT, 3 t BP is given for HIV infected children full term units, the first weeks of life only. Okay, and then DTG is given to children weighing more than 20 kgs. And those that screen negative for TB, they have to be given TPT, INH, 10 milligrams per kg for six months. Thank you. So thank you so much, uh, Dr. Muya. Uh, that was uh, another great presentation on a child who's infected with HIV. And I think uh, by the end of this session, I'm sure we've been able to know the age appropriate tests and uh, the first line regimen and the viral load monitoring. And so for further reading, and uh, you can use these references as part of uh, your, your follow up uh, to this discussion. So just for us to refresh our minds and uh, we'll, we'll go back to our polling. Uh, to our poll questions. 
so that we may really appreciate uh, what we've been discussing this afternoon. And uh, <clears throat> so we'll give you the first polling question again, and we want to see full participation. Everyone that is, is, is participating, we would like them to participate. So the first question is, which of the following is true? In children, HIV infection is confirmed by NAT in those above 24 months of age. Treating acute infection or any opportunistic infections before ART initiation is not necessary. The correct regimen for a child weighing more than 20 kg is ABC 3TC DTG. The purpose of monitoring and follow-up is to assess the effectiveness of the therapy. So we have about uh, 45 minutes now, sorry, 45 seconds, sorry, to, to respond to these uh, polling questions. Hi, Dr. Kozia, you need to launch the poll. You need to launch the poll, we can't vote. Sorry. Oh, it's not been launched. We might be disconnected. Yeah. Okay. All right. Sorry about that technical hitch. So which of the following is true? Okay, I think we'll end the poll here, so we may get the correct, correct answer. Dr. Muya, are you ready to take us through the correct answer for this particular poll? Okay. So the correct answers here are um, C and D. Sure, my colleagues in the hub are nodding their heads. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes, yes. So it's C and D. So the first one in children that, that are above 24 months of age makes it wrong. And then where it says the B treating acute infection is not necessary again, that's not it's not true. Eh? We believe that it's very important that we treat all, all the all eyes for initiate treatment. So C and D are the correct ones. Thank you so much. So we'll go to the next poll question. Which of the following is true? An HIV infected child should be on SZT 3 tc NVP for at least six weeks. Cochimoxazole should be initiated at birth in every HIV exposed infant, regardless of the default count. For children above five years of age, initiate cochimoxazole when in WHO stage two, three, or four, or CD4 less than 350. An infant who is not virus suppressed on ABC3TC and the favorance should be changed to AZT3TC favorance. So we can uh, go ahead and uh, um, pick uh, the correct answer on these uh, choices. We have 45 seconds. Can you see? Yeah. Okay. So, five more seconds. 
And I'll end the poll question here. Dr. Muya, could you run us through okay. why C is the correct so answer? So C is the correct answer because uh, we only initiate children, those above five years, on um, for tramoxas or prophylaxis, actually has three, three, four, or CD4 less than 350. The rest of the answers are not correct. A, an HIV infected cannot be on SGT3 TC for more than two weeks. Remember we said that if they're infected, they only be given two weeks. Okay? And then B, cotramoxazo can't be started at birth. Okay? That is contraindicated. It has a lot of complications if started at birth. Okay? Then D, you can't change from ABC3 TC fibrase, then you go to ABC3 TC. Huh? From AZT to AZT. Oh, so ABC to AZT. What you have essentially done there is just to do a single drug substitution. So nothing has changed much there. So okay. that's wrong. All right. Thank you so much. We'll move on to the next question. Question three. <coughs> So which of the following statements is true? NAT is the same as serology test. Caretaker or patient preparation before ART initiation is necessary under test and treat strategy. A child weighing above 30 kg can't be given TLD. A child who screen TB negative should start TPT with INH. And this has become close to a national anthem, so we're expecting everyone to get this answer correctly. Okay, we'll end the poll here. Okay, so here it seems even democracy has won. <laughs> <laughs> the majority have voted for, for well, D. D. Yes, yeah. that's the correct answer. All right. Yes, yes. So a, ch a child weighing more than 10, 30 kgs, obviously we, have, we can give TLD. This is another song which has been sung heavily. Okay, then the other one is um, caretaker patient. Care preparation. patient. I mean, patient preparation is not necessary. This is not true. It's very important. Otherwise, their genes will be affected and then they won't take their medication if they don't understand. A, not the same as road test. They are not, eh? They look for different things. But at the end of the day, they also, it shows that you have HIV, but what they look for to determine your HIV status, two different things. So thank you so much, Dr. Muya. We appreciate uh, your, 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 this presentation. At this particular time, I'm going to ask Lukonga to prepare their case that they'll be presenting. I would like to inform the spoke and the hub here that uh, today we have got a, 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 a review of, uh, some of, of one of the cases but seen six months ago. And so they'll be looking at, uh, we would like to just follow up and see the recommendations and the case outcomes how they were able to implement the recommendations and what were the outcome for this particular case. So they will share us and I'll ask them to prepare. In the meantime, I would like to get some feedback from the SPOCs. If there are any questions that we have for Dr. Muya, this is an opportunity for you to, to, to just uh, ask your questions and then you'll be able to just unmute. I've already seen a hand in AIDC. Before you get to the to, to AIDC. Anyone else in the in the box who would like to say something? Or oh, they've got some questions. CDC. What is that? 
So CDC Zambia, you can unmute and go ahead and make a comment. Sorry, I just I just forgot what the comment was. <laughs> just give us a minute. <laughs> okay, uh, AIDC UTH. No waiting, Dr. Mary. Oh, oh, sorry, sorry. I remember now. I remember. Sorry. So, <laughs> it was the first polling question, um, and I thought maybe one of the answers maybe needs to be clarified just a bit. The question, the, the, the answer said uh, you should first initiate treatment of OIs before initiating ART. So I was just thinking that depending on how you read that, um, it may be it may suggest that we're trying to say that you first treat OIs and then when the OI is treated, you begin ART. And I know that's okay. sometimes the case if you're dealing with cryptomeningitis or, or TB meningitis, but not, I don't think that's, that's what we were trying to say. I think we were trying to say don't ignore OIs and only treat yes. HIV. Okay. So if we could just yeah. clarify Correct. that. Be helpful. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Boyd, for that uh, uh, valid uh, contribution. And Dr. Moya, do you have a it's, comment? It's fine. Okay. Um, I, I, I saw another hand. AIDC. Yes, sir. Okay. Um, the other, thank you, Dr. Moya, for this question. Um, firstly, uh, since we are not pediatricians, maybe it, when you are saying um, they, they are stable, or then you can review them. And, uh, it's a little bit, I think for an adult, it's intuitive uh, to know what stable is, but for pediatrics, uh, how do you define stable? That's the first one. Then on the slides, there's one slide where you are uh, showed the various regime. The particularly, I, I couldn't understand why there was a weight band of 20 to 24.5 kg uh, on the next regimen. I think that tough. Can you just uh, have a look at that slide? Thank you so much, Dr. Chanda. We appreciate the, co the, the, the questions. So, Dr. Muya, what's the definition of, what's the definition of uh, stable in pediatric? There seems yes. to be a, mi a misunderstanding with the differentiated service sort of uh, definition of stable. Okay. In this case, we are talking about a child who is stage one. Okay. Their seed who is above the thresholds for age, um, they are very suppressed. Okay. Because this child, that this, the child is stable. Okay. Yeah. Their seed for the, okay, that's fine. So, Dr. Chanda? Yes. That's clear. Thanks a lot. Thank you so much. And okay. the next question? On the regimen, um, when we say 20 24.9 kgs, I think it's just a guide to show that uh, we can't use, okay, because you know there are different regimens that you can see on this slide. Um, yeah. Above 20, we can use DTG plus ABC3 The trouble is why we gave this guide is that uh, for TEFID, we can't use it to anyone less than 25 kg. So it's just to guide the clinician that if you're going to start anyone on TEFI, just be above 25 kg. If you have to start anyone on DTG-based, it's above 20 kg. If you have to start anyone above, I mean, TOD, just to be above 30 kgs. And anyone, anyone below 20 kgs, you can only use, start them on Lopinavir-based or Lautagrava. So basically, it's just to guide the clinician what regimen you can give based on the weight. Otherwise, above 20 kgs going upward, you can still use AZ, ABC, 3TC, DTG. There's no limit there. So just to guide that, I mean, the, the guiding factor here is the DTG and the TEF plus the Tenofova. These are the ones which are limiting us to tell people that from this age range, I mean, weight band, this is why you can uh, start these particular regimens or drugs containing these regimens. Thank you so much, Dr. Muya. Are there any questions before we move on to the case presentation? At this particular time, I'll make it open to the ex yes. Well, good afternoon. Please, good afternoon, St. Luke's. 
go ahead and and and, and make your Good comment. Um, Please go ahead. Okay, my, I have two questions. The first question is uh, um, a scenario of uh, a mother who is TB positive, and uh, a child. She has a child who is uh, asymptomatic. Now the question is: Can you give INH together with uh, BCG at the same time? That's the Sorry, just question. repeat. Re repeat the question. Okay. In a case where the mother is TB positive, are you getting me? Yes. Okay. In a case where the mother is TB positive and the child is asymptomatic. Can you give I and H together with BCG at the same time? BCG. BCG. BCG, yes. So, BCG at the same time. All right. Thank that's you so question. much for that. So, that's the first you have question. another question? Then I have okay. another one. Yeah. Please. The second person reads. Um, when is the patient? Regarded as lost to fall out. Okay. Uh, yes, yes. We've, we've heard that. Okay. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much. We we appreciate your your, your question. Can we take another question from Peter? Okay, I've seen the hand is up. Petauke District. Yeah, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Yes, uh, I'm Kamala asking a question, Bill. I'm a mentor here. Yes, question about I would like to understand why in the guideline um, when it's re it's come for to the no forward. They are requesting that the, the client should have a weight minimum of 35 kg. And when it's come to TOD, this weight has been taken down to 30 kg. Why? Why is that different? Okay. I thought it was based on a tenofova. Why, when it comes to TOD, it's 30. When it comes to tenofova alone, it's just 35 kg. Thank you so much. Dr. Mwea who, who ably answer those questions that you have raised. And uh, any other experts there in our midst, if need be. Mm -hmm. okay. Dr. Mwea, please. So I'll start with the last one. Why, TO, why 35 kg for Tenofo Varon? Actually, this has been, um, okay, in the guidelines, I know there's 35 kgs, but over time, you know, with the improvements in the, uh, those, I mean, the search going on, the use for the tenofovir has been reduced to 35 kgs. It's the one actually which makes us that these patients or TOD are starting from 30 kgs. It has been found to be safe starting from 30 kgs. But if you have the older guidelines, I know it's still 35 kgs. But just to inform you that the new information based on the evidence that is made available is that you can use tenofovir prescription if you're going to give anyone from 30 kgs. And like what you have in your guidelines now. But the, the next one, probably coming out in, uh, by next year in January, we hope to see that it will be 30 kgs. DTG is uh, 20, but if it's tenofovir, the suproxy fumarate is from 30 kgs. Because remember, also have tenofovir lafenamide, which is TEF, where we're starting at 25 kgs. There was one, I hope I've answered that question. Then there's another one on uh, initiation of cotramoxas. Yes, yes. There was a concern, there was a query that uh, why are we initiating, why should we wait until the child is in stage two, three, uh, has CD4 less than 34 to initiate to commence cotramoxas? So, so maybe it's just to clarify uh, what. Okay. Mm -hmm. So cotramoxas is meant to. Uh, Okay, somehow help you or protect you from opportunistic infections. Mm -hmm. Above 350, it's expected that your CD4 is too able to fight back efficiently. Okay, that's why we don't give you uh, cotramoxas. And the age. And the, okay, the age, uh, for those above five years, by that time, the, your CD4s 
usually are like adults. That's why we come to 350. But below that is usually use the percentages. But anyway, for cotramoxa, so it's given when you now see that their immune system is not functioning well, which is the CD4 has come down. And then you can see now they're becoming asymptomatic. They're becoming symptomatic. That's when you start giving them uh, to prevent opportunistic infections. That's why it's given. Otherwise, just give it, well, they are still relatively immune competent. It won't be of any use. The loss to fall up, uh, the, current, the current guidelines is that when somebody doesn't show up in the next 30 days, yes, that's loss to fall up. That's loss to fall up. I know maybe the older guidelines were talking about 60 days, eh? yes. but now it's 30 days. INH and uh, BCG, the mother is TB. I hope, I, what we didn't get is this child whose age was not uh, given to us. Because BCG is given at birth. So I don't see how, I'm not sure how, in what relation this is. Because by the time the mother, I'm not sure in what, whatever this is. But uh, giving the mother the same time, because they I need to have a look at some visit. I'm not too sure. Okay. Otherwise, anyway, this is a very rare scenario. I, I don't think I will not actually even um, consider this because the visit is given at bed. And at that time, at that point, I'm not too sure. Sorry, maybe I can comment. Chung, Go okay. ahead, Dr. Chung. Go ahead. Yes. yes, so just like Dr. Muya said, um, it will be rare that um, that scenario will pop up unless you have someone with very good clinical acumen who diagnose uh, congenital TB. But the recommendation is that the BCG, so maybe if someone suspects congenital TB assessment on day one, baby goes on INH. But the BCG should be given 24 hours after the last dose of INH because it will inactivate the BCG. Thank you so much, Dr. Chungu, for that uh, clarification. So, uh, uh, looking at the time that we have left, I'm going to invite uh, uh, Lukonga, uh, clinical mentor from uh, Western Province, to go ahead and uh, Make a presentation. Lukonga, are you, are you there? Hello? 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 Hello, we can hear you loud and clear. Okay, this is Lukonga. Yes, I'm ready. Go ahead. Okay, so this is Lukonga Lewakeni, clean commenter from Western Province. I'm going to present a case. It's a follow-up case. It was presented six months ago. That was 4th March, 2019. So I'll take you through the case that was pre presented way back. So this is a 13-year-old male in grade 5. Diagnosed with HIV at the age of five years old and was initiated on ART four months after diagnosis. Uh, he was admitted in January 2019 for persistent cough, diarrhea for more than a month, loss of appetite, weight loss, and oral candidiasis. He lives with a grandmother who reported good adherence with a child when the child is with her. He had adherence issues when the child visits the mother who is married, whereby the stepfather didn't really want the child to be visiting. He had history of TB, which was on chest, chest X-ray base, that was 2017, and he completed the treatment. A repeat gene expert was done in December 2018, and it was negative. On physical examination, temperature was 37, BP was not done, pulse was 55 beats per minute, respiration was 20, and his weight was 19 kg, height was 132. Mark SD, it showed severe malnutrition. <clears throat> so the child was wasted, had brittle hair, and showed no interest with the surrounding but had no edema. So with a clinical timeline, 
So you look at the regimen. This is a child who had uh, some switches on his regimen. He started with ABC, 3 tc effervorance. That was in 2010 up to 2013. Then was moved to AZT, 3 tc nevirapine. That was in 2013 up to 2015. Then later on, he was taken back to ABC, 3 tc effervorance. That was in 2016 to 2018. In 2018, December, the child was put on ABC3TC Lopinava. So HIV test was done in 2010. This was positive and was commenced on ARD. A viral load that is on file. The first viral load was done in 2017, that's February, and it was 52,949. Yes, Lukonga. The second vowel. Yes. Hello. Please go ahead. Yes, we thought we had lost you. Okay. So CD4 in 2016, it was 296. The letter on 2017, it dropped to 30 copies. In 2018, it went down to one. So HB 2010, it was 10 grams per deciliter. 2018, it was 9.4. So we had uh, a number of recommendations from the networks and the questions for this uh, presentation when we did it was, we wanted to know if uh, it was okay with us to do a resistant test on this plant. As you saw the high viral loads that he had recorded by then. So the second question was, uh, what second line regimen would be best for this child? So we had a several number of uh, recommendations from the platform, but these are the four key recommendations that we implemented. So the recommendation were that we encourage the team to recognize the need for effective ART management. Second one is since efference was only recently replaced with lopina varitonava, we expect him to start improving clinically and virologically. We acknowledge the sequential monotherapy, but we recognize you have limited options. The third one was since diarrhea is improving, we agree with continuing the lopina varitonava. The fourth one was in future when pediatric formulations are available or when he gains weight, we encourage you to add the Otegreva to this regimen in consultation with the Advanced Treatment Center. So we'll, we'll look at the labs in comparison, the previous, just the, re, the previous and the recent labs. So I'll concentrate more on the, on the recent, since we saw the previous. So you look at the viral load. After the presentation in March, we did the follow-up viral load in July 2019, which came out as 285. At the same time, we also collected CD4 from 1, it rose to 302. Then HB from 9.4, it went to 11.1. .1. So patient outcomes. The general comments that we would give on this patient is that the patient has really improved. He is well and is back in school. As he was sick, he had even stopped going to school. So the weight he gained from 19 kg to 30 kg, giving us 11 kg gain. Then he's virally suppressed. So mm -hmm. apart from the recommendations that we, we got from the platform, we also implemented uh, three things, whereby we attended to the social and nutritional issues that were raised during ECHO. And we also assigned a healthcare, healthcare worker to make bi-weekly home visits for adherence and nutrition counseling. We also talked to the mother to take up the full responsibility, the grandmother to take up the full responsibility of taking care of the boy. And we stopped, uh, we talked to the mother to stop the boy from visiting the mother. As you know, this is the boy who reported um, bad adherence when he visits a mother who was in a new marriage relationship. So we also linked the boy to the facility adolescent support group, and he has been active in the same group. 
So uh, the question that we pose today is, looking at the client's current weights and viral suppression, can we go ahead and switch the child to TLD? Thank you so much, Lukonga and the team. I think you deserve a very, very big uh, warm clap for this wonderful work that you did on this particular child. So if you can just give all yourselves a pat on the back, because since we can't see the, we can't hear the claps. Yeah, I think, I think people will agree with me that this is a tremendous, tremendous improvement. And uh, this is a child who's uh, a 13 year old and presents with marked wasting and uh, malnutrition, uh, immunologically poorly, uh, is, is not well failing, virologically failing and clinically failing with, no, with poor social support and with the recommendations given to actually address those issues. So thank you so much for this. I'm going to open it up to any comments from the folks, if we've got any comments you want to say about this case and uh, anything that you'd want to say in terms of uh, today's question that the, this team is asking for. Any comments from the folks? Questions? Lukonga, you've left everyone uh, mouthless. They've got nothing to say. <laughs> Okay, so you can stop sharing. Lukonga, you can you can you can exit sharing. Thank you. Do we have any any comments before I invite the experts to come in and make the comment uh, on this case? Okay, so um, I'll just invite uh, any uh, experts, any experts who would like to say something before Dr. Muya comes in. Dr. Thomas. Good afternoon. Uh, I think today's question, we can change the client to TLD because the viral load is uh, 295, the latest one. But uh, make sure we do a creatinine test because we are giving the TDF. And also the child CD4 is 302, but you put one uh, septin also. Alokonga, did you hear that recommendation? Yes. All right, all right, thank you so much. I've, got, I've seen a hand from uh, Yeta District Hospital. You would like, you have a question? Please go ahead. Yeta District. So thank you so much for that lovely presentation, Lukong, and congrats for doing such an amazing job. The child seems to be doing very well. Congratulations. Um, my concern is um, on the mother. Uh, did, we, did we try to find out uh, why exactly she was not um, allowing the child to adhere to treatment? Because uh, the concern for me there is this is a woman who might be living in a very hostile environment, uh, not just for the child, but even herself. So maybe there's some violence, uh, gender-based violence that is going on there. So we might want to link her to some appropriate services. I don't know if CCP is also covering um, the Mulunga. And maybe we might help her that way, because if she's failing to ensure that her child receives the drugs because of the relationship she's in, then maybe she's also planning to adhere to her own uh, treatment. That's, um, that's my concern. So I wanted to find out if we've done any further uh, probing on um, the environment surrounding uh, the mom as well. Otherwise, great job. Thank you. 
Thank you so much for that uh, important uh, 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 comment uh, coming in from Yeta District. I think it's a very, very valuable uh, 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 comment. And I think, uh, I don't know, Lukonga, if you've got any feedback on that. I know you've been concentrating on the boy and making sure that the child is all right. But I think uh, we, we, we're being reminded to think about the mother as well. Uh, any comments on that? Okay, I think uh, we'll take it up. It's only that we were mostly concerning with, uh, concerned with a boy and the mother stays very far. It's a distance from where we are. So even uh, the, those adherence issues, it was based on the grandmother and the boy himself. We never had time like to follow it up to see the mother herself. All right. Thank you so much. I've seen some more hands coming in from uh, uh, Kaoma District Hospital. Would you like to make a comment, a question? Hello. Yes, Good please afternoon. go ahead. Thank you. Uh, I've got a question to, uh, that goes to Dr. Mwia. Uh, Thank you. He mentioned, he mentioned of the CD4 percentages in children who are uh, less than five years of age. So I'd like him just to shed the light so we can be reminded. Sorry, on the eligibility, yes. on the eligibility uh, to cotrimoxazo in children who are less than five years of age. So I'd like to get the percentages. All right, thank you so much. I'll take some more questions. Um, Sialondwe, Derek from Livingston, could you please uh, unmute yourself and uh, uh, ask your question? Hello. Where, where? We can see. Hello. Yes, we can, we can hear you. Go ahead. Uh, my name is Catherine from Center of Excellence, Livingston. Welcome. Yes, yeah, thank you so much, Dr. Jamo. Uh, we really appreciate the efforts of the grandmother to this 13 year old child. Uh, mm -hmm. But now, here, as we sit, our concern is about the mother. We know that yeah. this is a mother who has gone into a, a, a new marriage, and we feel that she's at the same time, maybe. She's HIV positive and she's taking drugs. That she's since she's still a young woman who has gone into marriage, uh, she needs counseling herself because she might have another baby who she may and who she may expect to to throw down the elderly mother wherever she is. It is her duty to make sure that she also takes care of that child. And she should also uh, be able to tell the husband so that they together look after that child. Because she might, she might have told the husband when she was going into that marriage that she has a child who is actually, who is actually HIV positive. Thank you. That's the contribution from here in the pediatric center of excellence. Thank you so much. We appreciate your concern. And I think the team has mentioned that they, 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 they will actually try and make efforts. They have not met any so far because of concentrating on the child. And they will make efforts to follow up on, uh, on, on this particular mom. And I think it's important for indexing and being able to see even this woman herself, she still needs the care that she, she needs. Um, I'm going to ask um, AIDC, I saw your hand up. Would you like to make a comment? Oh, hi, Kozia. Sorry, we even put it down. <laughs> we got tired. We just wanted to comment on this case. Well done to the Conga, but also well done to Kongsa. We worked on this feedback, and she made sure that we had this session of feedback. But I think some of the things that the case highlights is not really outside drugs, that we focused on things like well, connecting the child to the community nutritionist, to strengthening the family ties. And we actually did not change the drugs, even if the actual question was, should we be changing the treatment? Should we be doing a resistance test? All these are very, very 
expensive things to do, but we can see that if we work on the things that we have within us, we can get to where we need to be. But well done, no, Mr. Well done. Dr. Great Dr. lesson. Great lesson to highlight, Dr. Sombo. I appreciate that one. Thank you so much. We had uh, an expert here who wanted to make a comment. Dr. Civile? Yeah, probably my, my comment was the same that Dr. Foloshi had, uh, uh, had just mentioned. I think often we get questions about drugs, you know, genotypes and other expensive tests, both in adults and children. But you can see from this case that uh, counseling, getting back to dealing with the family, you know, are, are usually the key. And this is not the only case. We see similar cases in advanced care where patients are, are, are referred here. But all you do is better counseling. And again, we can, it's, it's something to learn, you know, from especially other hubs, other hubs, uh, spokes that, that are on site. Please, please counsel these patients, you know, give quality care, you know, and, and, and outcomes will be better other than, you know, you can see from the case that previously they changed the drug several times, yeah. you know, and the outcome was not so good. But if, if you just strengthen, strengthen on the counseling, and just to mention that I agree that probably the patient can, can switch to TLD at this point because maybe it's one pill, better side effects profile and the like. Yeah. So Dr. Sevilla, you are saying that treatment is not just drugs alone? In most cases, comprehensive. Yes, the, be, the best, the biggest part of treatment actually in HIV services is actually comprehensive okay. care, other than the drugs and, and the genotypes that we rush to most of the time. Okay. Thank you so much. Are there any more contributions, comments about this fantastic case that has been presented this afternoon? Okay, St. Luke's, I see you waving at us. Please go ahead and uh, make a comment. Uh, good afternoon once again. Good afternoon. Hello. Yeah. Uh, this is Elvis again. Um, I want to start by recommending the team for the job which they did. Uh, it was really wonderful to see a boy from almost Western to come back to, to the almost full life or full health um, at that stage. However, I would like to also note some few things which I think uh, should be the learning point uh, from the whole uh, scenario the way they managed the child. So um, I stand to be collected now, however. So from the, the legends, I've seen that uh, they changed from uh, Everest to NVP. Okay, so um, from my understanding, these two, they, 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 are, they are from the same groups, from the same group and they share the same uh, resistant pattern. So maybe um, uh, in the near future, it, they could avoid uh, maybe uh, doing that by putting the baby or the child on the same uh, drugs that shares the same resistant pattern. Because you can see from uh, the viral load, first one was very much uh, at the drop also on the second uh, choice which they are chosen. It didn't have much difference. So uh, I want to believe that um, they could obviously go into uh, Lopina Valdez instead of switching on to um, MVP. Thank you. Thank you so much. Any comments from the sparks, from the experts? Dr. Chungu? Yes, um, I also want to, without sounding rhetoric, just to say that this is the reason why we have ECHO, so that Dr. Muya can transfer his expertise to Lukonga, who's several kilometers away. And this uh, case highlights that. Um, I just want to ask something to Lukonga and the team. Uh, this is a child who whose diagnosis came when he was five years old. Um, so at that, can you hear me? Very loud and clear, Dr. Chungu. Okay, so at that time, we expect that um, there was probably some cognitive issues. I realize that he's in grade five. A child his age should be in grade eight. So what is the... Have they assessed this child for encephalopathy? How is the school performance? 
because that will then underscore the need for these children to be starting ART as early as possible. Thank you so much, Dr. Chungu. That's caring for everything about this child. Thank you for bringing that up. Lokonga, have you, have you got any, 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 any comment on that? Yes, I, I think what we did on the child, from, uh, from the time we presented this case, the child had dropped from school. He only returned, uh, that was the last term, but we managed to talk to the, to the class teacher. So they're in a class of about 55, and last time he managed to scoop the position of uh, number 10. So we just saw that uh, the child is somewhere there. I, I think he can do better. Maybe it was just, uh, it was just disturbed with the issue of the illness. Okay. It's not bad. Not bad. So Dr. Chungu, would you like to say something about that? Well, it's not bad for, for, for the level that he's in school at. So please, will you yeah. give some, 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 some more information how you would like us to approach this child at this stage with your concerns you've raised? So with my concerns, as they said, engaging the teacher is very important because then you find that it's a child who might need maybe a bit more special attention in terms of catching up. And some kids have actually gone on to perform very badly, some even dropped out because of, of encephalopathy. So it's something that, that we need to uh, factor in so that the child's holistic development, as you said, can be factored in. All right. No, th thank uh, you. Thank you so much. Sorry, Dr. Zambo. Some... Yeah. Yes. There's a question I noticed on the chat, and it was there even the last time Dr. Mwia was on. And someone is asking that what's the difference between NAT and DNA PCR? <laughs> the, the the question has come back to haunt you, Doctor Mwe. <laughs> okay. okay. So the difference between NAT and DNA PCR. Some had actually named their child Nat because of this confusion. <laughs> okay, so Nat, which is nucleic acid test. test. So the nucleic acid tests, they look for DNA and RNA. These are components of uh, DNA. So nucleic acid are components of DNA. So when you do a DNA, actually we're doing a Nat test. The difference is that uh, DNA, you're specifically looking for Nucleic acids, which are on the DNA. Well, nucleic acid is a general term for components of DNA or RNA. So when you do a DNA, you are doing actually a NAT test. That's why I always tell people that they shouldn't wait for NAT to come. They are already doing a NAT. The confusion has been that uh, when they say DNA, people think you are sending a sample to the lab. When they say NAT, it means that you are doing a point of care. So the point of care is just a mode of testing for nucleic acids. Or when you send a sample to the lab, again, it's a mode of testing or looking for nucleic acids. So it's not much of a difference. It's just it's the same, it's just the names. So please, when we say nucleic acid test, we are saying you're looking for DNA or yes. RNA. In this case, the same thing. So we're already doing a NAT as a country, except in this case, we have specified that it's DNA. And we shouldn't confuse point of care machines too. I mean, it's not, point of care machine should not be synonymous to NAT. No, just that it's a, a machine which looks for nucleic acid that can be done anywhere other than a central lab. I hope I've answered that question. Then there was another one on the CD4 percentage for eligibility for those under five. For under five, like I indicated, uh, there's no need of any eligibility as long as you're under five, you're supposed to be on uh, cotramoxazole from six weeks until five. Unless, Dr. Okay, Thomas, you want to comment? Just uh, another question when you finish. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So for under five, usually we just give all of them cotramoxazole. This eligibility was, you, we were using it, the percentage one, we were using it when you were deciding who initiates ART. But now that everybody's test and treat, it's no longer being used as such. 
Okay, so those are two important clarifications, and I hope we have gotten it this time that NAT and PCR, you are essentially looking for the same thing. They're not different, really, in essence. So, Dr. Thomas, you have got a comment? I just want to find out who is giving the drugs to the child now. Is it the grandmother or is he taking it himself? If it is the grandmother, I think we can empower the child since he is 13 years. So it is just going to be one tablet a day, so he will get used to taking the drugs himself, but always to be supervised by the grandmother. Thank you so much, Dr. Thomas. So as we, we begin to wrap up, uh, let me just read one more question from the chat. Uh, so there's a question that why is there a need to change the treatment if the boy is doing so well? Why do you want to change the treatment if this boy is doing so well on the current regime? Can I start? <laughs> Dr. Sevilla, please. Okay, yeah. Okay, th thank, thanks for that question. Uh, I think before I even answer the question, I just want to amplify even what Dr. Thomas was trying to say. So yes, this child is doing well now, but eventually in the first next two, three years, the patient, the, the child will have probably different challenges in terms of the adherence than what, what the child has. So what caused the adherence problem was support system, grandmother versus mother and stepfather and things like this. As the child becomes an adolescent, now he's 14, yes, I think the challenges will begin to be personal issues now. So we are not yet out of the woods with this child, that should be clear. We still have the rough patch of adolescents to meet. Therefore, it's very important that we make probably an optimized therapy. So Aluvia has go, is a very good drug and probably a very, probably the reason why this child has done well. But it's not a perfect drug because it's got certain problems. The first problem is pill burden. Second is uh, probably uh, uh, side effects, diarrhea, and so on. Then comparing to Dolutegrava, it's probably not as forgiving as Dolutegrava. And there are other issues that probably very learned people like Dr. Kozia will say, fat redistribution problems and things like that. So we need an optimized therapy for those reasons. Dolutegrava is better in terms of genetic barrier. It's better in terms of side effects, it's better in terms of pill burden. That's why I would recommend that this child proceeds to Dolutegrava-based regimen. Thank you so much for making that emphatic, Dr. Seville. Uh, at this point, I think we've really discussed this uh, case to, to its extent, and I think a lot of learning has taken place, mm -hmm. and I think we are going to summarize the recommendations for further care of this child. But briefly, in a nutshell, what has come out is that we may consider moving the child onto Dolutegrava because it has the right weight and it's a better drug in this case, in these circumstances. Then further in the, uh, in, in, in the, in the care, we, 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 what we would like you to consider uh, looking into the care of the mother because uh, she also is somebody who is of particular interest to us in terms of the, the epidemic itself. We would like to make sure that the mother is taken care of. She is well suppressed and is no longer transmitting the virus to any other would-be uh, people. So I think that's another important recommendation that has, seems to have come out of this meeting. And I, I think with those remarks, I'm going to invite uh, Nomsa to give us um, some uh, announcements on the topic that we have for, is, is the topic we have for next week and uh, which will be presented by Dr. Seville. Um, <clears throat> well, I think that was very, very productive um, discussions and um, thank you for your uh, proactive engagement in, in, the, in the network. So we, next week, we will be having another very interesting um, session, and that is uh, 
uh, mental health, uh, in so HIV. Okay, so, sorry, uh, uh, like it has already been mentioned, um, uh, Dr. Sivile will be taking us through uh, another interesting topic next week, which is retention in HIV care. Uh, so please look forward to that, um, that topic because the goal of this participation really is to improve the quality of care of the people that we are taking care of. It's not an academic exercise, and therefore we really appreciate, especially that today's um, session did demonstrate that uh, the experts can make a difference um, in the people out there that need their support, and that will translate to improving uh, health outcomes. So please look forward to participating next week, and um, uh, it's great that we are now implementing what we learn on the session, and that translates to patients' outcomes. We are so grateful, and remind you one more time, submit your registers, because we want to know who is participating in the network, and um, like I mentioned, it also does add value to you. As you participate, you can also accrue CPD points. CPD points. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, and uh, have a wonderful week. Thank you. <clears throat>